Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. Today we're going to discuss main nutritional types of microorganisms. In the previous video, we have discussed few types of the microorganisms based on their nutritional requirements. Today we're going to discuss in a little bit more detail. So let's start with the phototrophs. What are phototrophs? Phototrophs are the organisms that uses light as energy source and then you have chemotrophs. These are the organisms that are using chemical compounds. Those can be organic and inorganic compounds for their carbon source as well as for their energy requirements. Then you have lithotrophs. Litho means rock. So it is easy to remember because then rock resembles the inorganic substances. So the word rock, it indicates the inorganic substances. So lithotrophs are the organisms that are using reduced inorganic substances. Fourth one, fourth category is the organotrophs. Organotrophs are those microorganisms that are using reduced organic substances. These are some of the introductory types. And then, before we move on to the further subtypes, I want to mention that these organisms can be further classified based on their carbon energy as well as electron requirements. If you have seen my previous video on microbial nutrition, I have discussed the importance of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and electrons, as well as the energy. So it's important, based on the these specific resources, they are further classified. The category one is photolithoautotrophs, or photolithoautotrophy, where you have light, as the energy source and then you have CO2 as the carbon source. Examples for this particular category is the purple and green sulfur bacteria. So let me write it down which is purple and green sulfur bacteria. Another example for this is cyanobacteria. Now let's move on to the second category which is photoorganoheterotrophy photoorganoheterotrophy. I'm writing with a gap so that you can understand the meaning by the by the words that I'm using. So photoorganoheterotrophy means you're using CO2 and you're using organic compounds. Let me write it down. You're using organic compounds as well as carbon dioxide. Example for this particular category includes green and purple non-sulfur bacteria. So it's important to remember that photolithoautotrophy, which is the first category, you have the example purple green sulfur bacteria and for the second category you have the purple green non-sulfur bacteria as the example. Third category which is chemoorganoheterotrophy, where you're using organic compound as the carbon source and then you're using organic compounds, compounds as the energy source. So basically in this case, you're using organic compounds for carbon source as well as for the energy source. Example for this particular category, this category is really important. Example is the most non-photosynthetic microbes that includes the pathogenic organisms. It's important because most of the pathogenic organisms, they, they fall under this category, chemoorganoheterotrophy. Now next category, fourth category is chemolithoheterotrophy. So fourth category, which is chemo, that indicates the, uh, the chemical compounds as the energy source, and then you have lithoheterotrophy. So that means there must be some use of the inorganic compound. So you're using organic compounds as the carbon source for energy source you're using inorganic compounds. Example for this is sulfur oxidizing bacteria. Most of the sulfur oxidizing bacteria, not most but some of the oxygen 
sorry, sulfur oxidizing bacteria, they are included in this category. Next, you have chemolithoautotrophy. Here, you have most of the sulfur oxidizing bacteria and methanogens. But what is chemolithoautotrophy? The organisms that utilizes carbon source as CO2, as the carbon source, and inorganic chemicals or compounds as the energy source. As I've already mentioned, sulfur oxidizing bacteria and methanogens are the important example for this particular category. I hope that uh, the components that we have discussed in this video, the parts that we have discussed in this video are clear to you. We have discussed some of the important types of the microorganisms based on their nutritional requirements. We have discussed phototrops, chemotrops, lithotrops, organotrops, which is easy to remember. Further, we have discussed photolithoautotrophy, then photoorganoheterotrophy, chemoorganoheterotrophy, and we have discussed chemolithoheterotrophy. Further, finally, in the fifth category, which is chemolithoautotrophy. And we have also discussed that most of the pathogenic microorganisms, they fall under the category of chemoorganoheterotrophy. You need to remember that. All right, with that note, I will just conclude this video. I hope that this video is going to help you to understand most of the nutritional type. If you read further on this topic, you're going to get more information. And if you can make notes on this particular topic, that these those particular notes are going to help you in your exams because there is a good chance that you're going to forget about these terms. So I hope this video is going to help you to remember what are these nutritional types. I will make more videos in future and I will bring such interesting topics in my next videos. All right. Till then, take care.